Hey everybody, I'm Rob, Design of Hollywood Serving. And I'm Tyler, not changing my last name Pixley. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not really a, a graphics artist. No, I'm not or changing graphics, it. No. Or a graphics programmer. No. And this is Design Underground, episode 13, lucky number 13. This one should go perfectly swimmingly. Fantastic. Uh, we're back after a week hiatus to let the tech guys have a little fun, but we brought a tech guy with us just to make sure that there's some consistency here. <laughs> Today, we're going to talk to you about a really exciting, exciting thing. You might want to just turn it off right now if you're not into coding or Blueprint. But we're going to talk about Blueprint interfaces, which are really critical to what we're doing. Yes. And one of the things where we found that the documentation provided by Epic is not quite as complete as we might have liked. Just one of the places. Just, just one of the places. There, there might be others. There but are. It's one of those things that is so powerful that you need to know how to use it. And it takes a lot of research to actually figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do all the research for you. Um, so the idea behind an interface, why, why, don't you, why don't you explain a little why I would want to use a Blueprint interface? So uh, interfaces are not a concept unique to Blueprints. Uh, they're part of all object-oriented programming, which is what basically anyone these days would use to make games. Basically, instead of needing to make a new child class derived from like one uh, parent class to like have a bunch of different stuff kind of do the same thing for the for a similar event um, resulting in potentially multiple inheritance which is generally considered to be very bad programming practice you have an interface which just gives you a list of, uh, of functions or methods that you that the classes that implement it can implement those functions as they need or desire so an example they give on the uh, Epic website, actually, is if I have a fire event that I want to fire off, and I want different things to react to it in a different way, but I want to use it just to be able to have whatever's making the fire, just call out and say, hey, I'm making fire. And then whatever it runs into says, OK, I will take that I'm getting I mean, I'm having fire applied to me event and do what I want with it yeah. without having to branch a bunch of times in your code or anything to handle that. Yeah, because um, bowling balls and people react very differently to fire. And, and trees. and So you, what, we're, what we're doing here is we're trying to do one little I'm going to shout out and everybody that needs it can handle it. And it will just quietly go away, but you can't handle it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a very effective system for Blueprint people yes. to use to talk between Blueprints. So we're going to actually show you an example of how this is done. It's going to be really quick and really simple, but I figured that the easiest way to learn something like this is to see it in action. Absolutely. I've learned a lot of things about Unreal Editor by watching YouTube videos. So we're going to add one of our own. <laughs> so let's go over to the screen there. Oh, look at that. Here is the oh-so-familiar sample project um, used everywhere for tutorials. <laughs> yep. If you thought you were going to get a look at our blueprint and our code yet, right now, not yet. Nope. No. not quite yet. Someday, but not today. <laughs> All right. So the first thing we're going to do, what, what do we think we want our, our interface to be talking to? Do we want to do the fire example, a bowling ball on fire? Yeah, we can do a bowling okay, ball. Okay, let's fire. set the bowling ball on fire. We're going to create a brand new empty blueprint class. It's going to be an actor. Actors are just general objects in the Unreal Engine. Yes, something that does stuff. Yep. Or doesn't do stuff, as the case may be. It's just a thing that exists. And we're going to put it in the Blueprints folder, and we're going to call it Bowling Ball. It's a good name. All right. OK, so here is our empty event graph. It's got all the, the stub stuff plugged in there that we're not going to do a darn thing with right now, because all we're showing you is about how the interfaces work. All right, so now we're going to make another new Blueprint class, which I need to go back to the main editor screen to for. And we're going to make this one an actor, too. And we're going to call this one Flamethrower. Ooh. OK. And what we're going to do to make these talk to one another, again, empty event graph, we're not touching that much either. So we're going to add an interface. All right. So we go from our brand new fire flamethrower, which will be applying fire to our bowling ball, which will be accepting the fire. So in order to do that, we need to add a Blueprint interface. This is the sneaky part. So you go down here to the Add New, pull up your Blueprint submenu, and you do a Blueprint interface. Very, very simple thing. Got to um, name it. Yeah, I got to name it. 
Just stuck it in the middle for no apparent reason. I don't want you there. Um, this is going to be called the uh, blue uh, fire, apply fire interface. That's what we're going to call it because it's got one job and one job only. Yep. It'll open that up fire. in the editor. And when you see when your interface for the first time, it will have one function that is blank. And will always be blank. And it we'll can't do anything. You can't even touch this window in the middle here. You can only play with it over here. You'll notice it's asking you to name your function already, so we'll do apply fire. And we will add a couple of inputs. We want inputs, we want outputs. We want inputs. Yeah. We're going to add a float value. We're going to call it uh, fire damage. Sounds good for now. Yeah. Then we're going to add another float value that is going to be uh, flame duration. How about just in case we need to pass that from somewhere? That may end up getting set in the event graph or as we're running the events and mm -hmm. say, okay, keep applying this for this long. All right, that's enough information for now. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our classes. So with our interface created and now inherited by this, this class, our bowling ball, we need to first compile and save because it doesn't understand how to use it yet if you haven't compiled. And you will get bad results, which uh, has happened oh so many times. So we're now going to actually, we have access to apply fire. And look at that. There's several different places where that appears down here, and yet they're all from the same interface. This is where it gets tricky, you see. What you need to do is you need to look for not the actual function call, because that's actually implementing it in your class and not asking for anybody else's input. You want to look for the event. And that event is coming from, this is the interface call down here, from the interface class. So it will be nested under the interface's name. Stick that in there. That's still the blue event. That's not the right one, is it? No, nope. you wanted the event. I do want the event. The main event. This event. So you'll notice that this one is blue, and it is using the interface. But so is this event using the interface. What you want is this one because the event is going to sit there and listen for someone to apply fire to this object. And when its blueprint detects that the apply fire message has been sent out, which we'll do next, it knows what to do with it. It'll pick it up and run with it. Yeah. The blue one is calling that event, saying like, hey, th this event is being triggered. I need you to do something with this. The red thing is, OK, I'm receiving this event. Valuable blueprint knowledge right there, direct from the Pixly. All right, once again. Compile and save. Do not forget these things. You will be very sad. Especially if you have errors in there and you forget to save them. Compile them and save them and run your game. Yep. All right, so we are now going back to our flamethrower. Our flamethrower has not gotten the interface yet, so we're going to go to our class settings. We're going to add the interface, apply fire interface. We're going to compile and save. So the tricky thing about using these blueprint interfaces is if you do not use one little trick when you're implementing them on the calling end, mm -hmm. you will never see the method you need to call to correctly implement it without having to do a cast. The important thing is it, you can always implement it with a cast to this blueprint class. But that takes away all the advantages you have of being able to just throw it out there and say, anyone who can pick this up and do something with it, go do it. So I want to implement it once, and not once for everybody that can, then be, that can be lit on fire. So let's get ourselves, we need to have an actor available yes. to us. So let's go ahead and just add really quick to get access to an actor. Event overlap. Let's see. Can I find it? There we go. Actor begin overlap. There we go. I now have an actor available. This is the crucial thing. If you just right click here on your context menu and you look for apply fire, you will see the event, you will see the function call, and you will see the class interface call. That's not the thing you need because that needs a blueprint instance. Yep. You want the actor one. So if we drag off this actor and bring up the context menu, look at that, the message. The That's message. the thing they don't tell you about on the website. <laughs> so you'll see here, if you've done it correctly, you will have a little envelope there in the corner of your, of your apply fire. So it knows it's sending out to somebody else who, if you look at the bowling ball, has a little receive icon there saying, I'm going to get an apply fire event, and I will handle it my way and everybody else will do the same way. At this point, you can add as many of these to as many different blueprints as you want, and they all just take that same event and handle it properly for themselves. Yes. So once you know that little trick, you're good to go. And we can go back to doing mining blocks and mining lasers with applied mining damage. Yes. <laughs>
So thanks for hanging out. Again, I'm Rob Irving. I'm Tyler Pixley. We'll see you next time on Design Underground. <laughs> okay, more cut work than usual. <laughs>